glad to be here. I'm going to talk about a project that I did when I was working for the Snohomish Conservation District, which is the county just north of us here in Snohomish County, and um, was a grant funded by Western SARE, a producer professional grant. So we started in about 2011. So we talked about some of this already today, but uh, particularly in this area, horse owners really do contribute to maintaining the open space in the area, particularly along the rural urban fringe there. Uh, and they are a contributor to the local agriculture infrastructure and the local economy, even as we talked about earlier, sometimes they don't think of themselves as ag producers or the, ag, the rest of the ag industry doesn't think of them, of horse owners in that way, but they are an important contributor there. They've also been um, overlooked as contributors to the agricultural systems. and so. In some ways, particularly in this area, and this is very northwest centric here, um, there's a lack of basic knowledge about manure and nutrient management. They're not really in those systems. And they're, in some cases, unaware of their impact on uh, the water and soil quality. And they're not subject to some of the same regulations. Or if the regulations are in place, they're not typically enforced, as was mentioned earlier. So they fall into a little bit of a, of a middle zone there. And in, in this area, particularly, at the, you know, at the, it's a very wet area, and there, a lot of the horse places have, have very close neighbors or a lot of water running through the property. And disposal of used bedding is, is quite costly, especially if it's high in carbon and it's not particularly of value to gardeners necessarily. And so it's often used to fill in low spots or ravines, make massive piles, sometimes larger than the barns, really quite impressive manure piles. So in order to address these kinds of concerns working in this area, we developed a study uh, with, with these purposes, to study and promote the use of compost as an alternative bedding material, and then encourage ho horse owners and managers to think more creatively about waste. And then, and then in the end, to improve manure management practices for equine facilities in Snohomish County. So really there were two things, to be able to study and promote the use and also to really use that as an opportunity to start a conversation about waste with uh, horse owners and facility, equine facility managers. So our methods of the, of the sort of demonstration and outreach trial project was um, to, to establish a compost trial with equine facilities across Snohomish County. We, used, we had 10 commercial facilities, so boarding and training facilities, and then two private barns, ranging in size from about 5 to 20, or greater than 20 stalls. And these were all using bedding, either wood shavings or pellets, uh, either generous use or sparse use, depending on the facility. Uh, we, the, we had two phases of the project. The first phase used uh, stall bedding and manure was composted on site using uh, aerated micro bin system developed by O2 Compost in Snohomish County. And then a product called the Brockwood Stall Shifter, which is a, and I'll show you a picture of it, it's a way of sorting the manure from the bedding. The second phase was when we brought compost in uh, from off site to use in the stall. Another important part of this project then, of course, was the education and outreach component. And again, the, the objective here was to start a conversation about waste with, with horse folks in the area. So we had a lot of events and demonstrations. We had a, a facility set up at the State Fair. Uh, the Snohomish Conservation District published a lot of articles in their newsletter. We had fact sheets. We had a, a seven-minute video that was posted on YouTube and on our website. We spoke at various different equine events. And of course, then working with the, the actual um, facility managers on site as well. So there was a strong education outreach component. And really, again, just trying to start that conversation, trying to get people thinking about waste versus resources and just really expanding the way they were thinking about it and having that conversation. So I'm going to go through some of the photos of how, what we did here. The first phase, as I mentioned, was composting the bedding and reusing it on site in the facility that it came from. This is the micro bin system here. This is produced by O2 Compost, Peter Moon. Some of you may know, know him. It's a small micro bin system that, you, that a horse owner or anybody can purchase as a kit. It's about $900 for the kit. Uh, you build it, assemble it yourself, and, and then you can compost there on site. It's a, four, it's a four by four by four cube. This is looking down inside the bin here. These are where the aeration comes in, these pipes. You put some, some pellets or something in here and then fill it with compost and then turn the blower on. Yeah, I'm sorry that this isn't quite fit here, but. So this is, you know, putting the waste in and then composting it for a minimum of 30 days, measuring the temperature. We turn the blower on for about 30 seconds every 30 minutes, um, sometimes more during the winter if we need to dry it out a little bit. Let's see if I move this up. Maybe it'll work better. Okay, try that. And then after, after it's composted, then we empty the bin and sort the composted manure from the bedding. 
So this is what the manure would look like after it comes out. Uh, this is the stall shifter. You guys can read my notes here, I see. <laughs> so um, so what, what we would find, this, this thing shakes back and forth, and then the, the stall shavings, the, the, the compost or the shavings fall down underneath and the manure comes off the end. This particular piece of equipment is designed and marketed by the Brockwood Company to clean stalls. So you're supposed to wheel, wheel it into the stall, sho shovel your shavings and manure onto it, the shavings fall down, and the manure goes out the end, and you, it's, a, it's a stall cleaning tool. And then this is what the compost generally looked like in the stall. This is a stall that's bedded with pellets, and then this is a pile of compost they're storing in that empty stall in order to use it. And, if, and like I mentioned, the manure has been sorted out on the screen. So this is some, this is some pictures of some of the different facilities we worked with. This is, the, this is a, a large boarding and training facility that was very, very generous on their use of shavings. So we have the shavings going in. This is the bin after, the, after, after it's been composted for 30 days and the, take the front panel off to empty it. This is what it looks like. And this is what the composted shavings look like. This stall, this horse facility owner was so surprised after we finished this process that how much waste he had. He didn't realize how much he was wasting. And so after this process, he worked with his uh, employees to really reduce the amount of waste that was coming out of the stalls there. It was also hard to convince him to use it in his stalls because it was such a nice product, he wanted to use it on his landscaping. So he used it in a few stalls. And of course, as I'll talk about later, it was hard. His clients had a hard time with it. He liked the idea. He was okay with the idea. But it was his clients, of course, boarding clients that were hard, had a hard time with it. So this is an example of a very generous, probably excessive use of wood shavings in the stall. This is an example of um, very generous use of wood pellets in the stall, so more of a sawdust type material after the pellets break down. This is after composting. This is the material uh, after it was sorted. This worked pretty well. It was hard to get it dry enough, and this was a smaller facility and kind of a dark barn, and she didn't like how it looked dark in the stall and didn't look as bright. This is an example of very, very sparse use of wood pellets. You can see there's a lot of just straight manure in there after composting. It's very, very dark. It's very wet. Um, maybe less than half of it was actually recovered after sorting it out. Uh, so they were very, very sparse in their use of pellets. This was a, actually at a farrier school, and they found for hoof health, they like to have less bedding in their stalls. So those are some examples of the first phase. This is the second phase of the compost, where we, of the project, where we brought in compost that was produced off-site. And um, this, is, this is the, you all went out to Yost Farm yesterday, some of you went on the tour yesterday. This is the compost that was produced in their earth flow system on Bainbridge. This was allowed for 100% recovery, which was unique. All the, all the manure was still in there. It had been broken up, mechanically broken up, so it wasn't sorted out. So instead of sorting it at, at the end, you got, had 100% recovery. And they were using shavings. This allowed us to deliver, take compost from EOS Ranch and deliver it directly to tr trial participants. So it enabled us to expand the number of folks we could work with, people who weren't particularly interested in making their own on site, but they would use it if we delivered it to them. It also took out some of the variation, and so we, they were all using the same product. And then at this point, we had already noticed a few interesting things about horse health, respiratory and skin conditions. And so for this phase of the trial, we were able to then specifically seek out horses that had those conditions and, and, and um, ask them to participate. So what did we learn, particularly in this trial? We learned that compost is an effective bedding. We, we knew that going into it, but we wanted to, sh to show that again. So we learned that compost is an effective bedding for horses. It's less dusty and more absorbent, typically, if it's made correctly and if it's not too wet. It's darker in color and tends to have a little more moisture in it. We didn't have any reports in all of our participants of increased odors or negative impacts on horse health. We also found, not surprisingly, that appearances are important and that they're not as important to barn managers, and particularly the barn managers seem to be able to get their head wrapped around the idea of reused bedding. They liked the concept. Of course, it was a cost savings. They could see the benefits. They couldn't, they needed help communicating with their clients. They weren't, they couldn't make that leap with their clients, and it wasn't a uh, battle they wanted to fight, so to speak. Uh, and, of, and it also required some changes in, st in stall management practices. So looking at how you clean the stall, it was darker in color, it was hard to see the wet spots, people said. They thought they might have used more bedding, they couldn't quite tell. It really kind of confused them in their stall management system. Um, but they, you know, that was just one of the things they had, to, they had to get over. One participant in particular reported that when she used the composted bedding, her horse always went in one spot and it was tidy and she could clean it out. And when she went back to her non-composted bedding, the horse went all over the stall and made a mess. So those, those kinds of little bit of anecdotal stories and interesting things, people had to just change their management practices. We also found that 
people wanted to know about disease or pathogen issues, but they didn't really dwell on it, and they, they didn't, it wasn't as big of an issue as appearance, which really surprised me. So it wasn't that I think this is dangerous, it was that it looks funny. That was really a, a hurdle for people. Um, and not surprisingly, the micro bin stall shifter process was too labor intensive, just wasn't going to work on a large scale. And the amount and type of bedding um, determines the effectiveness of the reuse system. So the more waste they had, like those first pictures I showed you of the, of the barn that used uh, excessive use of shavings, the more waste, the more recovery, makes a better sort of composted product. And then, of course, shavings allows for more recovery because they're larger pieces and don't break down as quickly in the compost pile. So the, the, you know, a conservative use of wood pellets just wasn't going to yield as much uh, compost back in the end. And then there were some seasonal differences in moisture management. The winter, in particular, in the Northwest is wet, and so you know, the compost was hard to dry it out in the middle of winter. Now, I think that there was, this would be an advantage, potentially, in drier climates, where you have extremely dry climates. It can be hard on horses' feet, I know, sometimes. And so if you have them bedded in a stall with a little bit of moisture in the compost, uh, that could really be a benefit. Potentially, there's something to consider. This, I want to share a little bit of some of the folks we work with, and this is the anecdotal evidence we collected. I don't know, evidence is a strong word, maybe, but the observations around horse health benefits, things that we were not expecting to see. Um, Dr. Hannah Mueller of the Cedarbrook Veterinary Clinic said, we had a horse with hives, an allergic reaction to the bedding, and the composted bedding was actually better for her than her regular bedding. We also had a horse with a tracheostomy, and the composted bedding was great because it was a lot less dusty. So this is a horse with a hole in their throat. So being able to work in a veterinary um, situation, particularly the dust abatement, was an important one for them. Um, Cortez suffered from scratches for at least 10 years. Using composted bedding, his scratches cleared up after about two weeks. His legs looked great. Uh, what had been oozing and sore scab started to scab over, dried up, and then eventually went away. He ended up with hair regrowth on those pasterns that had been affected for so long. So again, a horse that had had for many years had had a, a scratches or the fungal condition on his legs and on the, on the composted bedding, it cleared up in this case. Uh, after three weeks of using 100% composted bedding, Dolce is doing much better, probably 75% improvement. Aside from a stray scab or two, her back and belly are all cleared up from a rain rot condition. And this is using a combination of, one, of half composted bedding and half fresh uncomposted bedding. My gelding had thrush when I started and he didn't when I stopped. So these are all the things that in their own words what folks have said to, to us in this trial process, uh, just that I th think is interesting to, to notice. And the question then comes, why are we seeing horse health benefits, potential benefits? Maybe it's just a coincidence, but what are we seeing? Uh, and what, what comes to mind for me is less dust. Uh, that's, a, that's a benefit particularly for skin and respiratory conditions. And, and is it a pH difference? Is it less acidic? Is there something else going on in there in terms of just the chemistry of it? And then we also have, in a, in com in a compost, we have a thriving non-pathogenic microbial population. So are you just balancing out some of these imbalances on the skin or hooves? Um, is it less likely that, that, a, that an infection can get a stronghold if you just have a lot of um, diversity there? So that's the other question. And I think this shows, along with other things people actually have said to me today and other things people have noticed, I think it does show justification for a clinical trial. It can be difficult to do, um, you know, to, to, make an, to, to create a tr clinical trial, but I think there's justification for it, and I think there would really be a, a benefit to do one. So again, moving what we, what we can do in future work in this area, research on the horse health aspects of it, looking at the engineering, we need a more efficient method of doing it, obviously, than what we did for this trial, and to get 100% recovery. So developing a system that works really well for bedding recovery. And then looking also at the education of horse owners, and I think there's really a role that extension or conservation districts can do in this way, is really help the equine facility managers have those conversations. So looking back on this project, it would have been um, helpful, I think, to build in that part of the project of working with those barn owners specifically to help them educate their clients, to have those conversations, to have um, come out and spend some time there and really talk about it and develop a client education program instead of a barn owner education program. And then what are people willing to pay for? The other question is, I think, are some of these horse owners the type of people who are spending extra money on premium products that are green or environmentally friendly or various things, and are they, does that translate over into their horse um, horse keeping, you know, are they willing to pay a premium to board their horse in a facility that is in more environmentally managed? So what we learned is compost is an effective alternative bedding product uh, and widespread adoption is going to depend on, an, a, first of all, an efficient process and second of all, education is going to be a big piece. I think there is justification for a, a research trial 
and and not to um, Last but not least, I guess, is it did start an important conversation about waste. There were a lot of opportunities to talk to folks about it, to really get people thinking. Um, we had one facility in particular, he, he saw what was going on, we did a few trials, it didn't work for him again, his clients couldn't handle it, but he went and decided he was going to completely overhaul his manure management system and look at composting. And so those types of, it kind of got us in the door and got us talking to folks. Um, and another surprising use for it was also back in the arena as footing. Some people started to look at it that way. So it just really opened up the conversation and, and got us thinking about, got folks thinking about some new things. And again, this was funded by Western SARE. Um, and O2 Compost here in Snohomish, Washington was a, was a collaborator on the project and of course our trial participants. And this is my contact information. I'd be happy to at any point to visit with anybody further about it. And this is my, uh, my blog with some information on it down there as well. So 